Hey guys, Brian Schultz here with Cape Falcon Kayak, and welcome to the 13th video in our free Greenland paddle building series. In this video, we're going to be talking about tuning the flex of the blade and doing the final blade shaping with the block plane. Now, remember, this is a series, so if you haven't done this already, make sure that you go back and at least watch the introduction video. I'll throw a link up on the screen for that right now, and you can find the entire playlist with all these videos in order here on the channel. You can also find this entire series for free without any commercials on my website. And then, as always, if you want to support the free content that we put out here, think about picking up a set of our paddle plans, checking out our skin on frame boat building courses, buying your next piece of paddling gear from us, or just making a donation. You can find all that stuff on our website, and there are links in the video description below. And of course, if you have any thoughts or any questions, make sure you leave them in the comments. All right, enjoy the video. So now that we're finished shaping the loom, the next thing we're gonna do is take off a little bit more material up here by the shoulder if we need to. And then we're gonna measure the thickness of the paddle at three different points along the blade. We're gonna evaluate the flex of the paddle. And then if we need to, we're gonna thin it down a little bit more. And then finally, we're gonna finish shaping this entire surface. Now, I'm sure you're noticing that this is a laminated paddle and not the solid red cedar paddle we've been working on for most of this video. And the only reason for that is just because I wanna do a few updates to the process here. So you're gonna see me switching back and forth between this paddle and the solid red cedar paddle, but don't get confused by that. It's the same process. Now, just a quick note before we get started, because all these surfaces are rounded now, your paddle's probably gonna be a little bit wobbly on your workbench. So I would recommend clamping this down on top of a towel to help stabilize it, and also to protect these surfaces from getting dented. Now, another thing that helps to stabilize the paddle is just to spread your clamps as wide as possible. So normally I have one clamp up here, almost up to the shoulder, and another one back here, almost out to the tip. That way it's not gonna wobble on me while I work. So next up, we're gonna do some pretty heavy shaping toward the root of the blade, and then you're gonna set your plane a little bit finer, and we're gonna do the final shaping on all four of these blade surfaces. Now, yours might look a little bit different, just depending on how aggressive you were or weren't with your power planer in this area, but most people are gonna have a little bit of a hump or a ledge right here before it comes onto the loom. And what we wanna do is use the block plane to blend the face of the blade into the line of the loom. So it's pretty much self-guiding. You're just gonna work this down, and then once this little ledge here disappears and you're basically planing right into the loom, that's where you're gonna stop, and then we're just gonna refine this shape a little bit more. Now, if for some reason you are way too aggressive with your power plane and there is no ledge between the shaping on your blade and your loom, in that case, you're not gonna wanna do this next step I'm gonna show you. You're gonna wanna go on to the shaping steps after that. So coming in here with my block plane set to about a medium cut, I'm just gonna start taking off some pretty big shavings of wood. To plane this down so this surface is gonna blend into the cut that we just made along the loom. And right now I'm just planing a flat facet right here. I'm gonna round it over in just a sec. Okay, so it looks like we're down to it. You can see how this surface just flows right into the loom right here. And now, I can start working this really close to my line, just like we did before, about an eighth of an inch to a sixteenth of an inch away from the line. Having this be a fairly sharp point right here is actually a really important part of your hand grip because the way you're actually gonna be holding this paddle is to put your thumb and forefinger around the paddle like that and these three fingers are gonna index over that ridge. And so if that ridge is a little bit pointy, that actually helps to stabilize the paddle. And you wanna make sure that you're taking at least moderately long swipes. You wanna blend this into the rest of the paddle and then I'm gonna blend it over the top, but I'm not gonna reduce the vertical height of the paddle in this area. Now, just a quick clarification, when I'm roughing out the height of the shoulder, I'm usually working from the middle of the blade up to the loom right here, but then when I get into this blending stage, I'm usually coming all the way from the end of the paddle. Because that helps to take a little bit more meat out of this area, helps to reduce the blade weight a little bit. So switching paddles for a moment, now seems like a good time to talk about blade thickness and flex. 
Now, a little bit of flex in a Greenland paddle is really nice to have because it makes it a lot nicer to paddle with. It also makes it easier on your joints, and to a point, it makes it less likely to break. Now, also, once you've taken away enough material to get the right flex in your paddle, it's gonna be as light as it possibly can be. So there's lots of advantages to adding flex to a Greenland paddle, but you do have to be careful with this because if you add too much flex and you thin the blade out too much, it's probably not gonna make it likely to break longitudinally, but it's gonna make it a lot more likely to crack down the blade or to get damaged when you crash into things. So how you approach this part of the process just depends on whether you're working from paddle plants or whether you're doing this by eye. If you're doing this by eye, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is check the flex and then start modifying it by thinning out the blade if you need to. But if you're working from my paddle plants, I actually have detailed drawings for stations along this length that shows the thickness of the blade at various points and also the blade shaping. So if you're working from a set of paddle plans, what you're gonna to wanna to do at this point is grab your tape measure and you're gonna to want to identify and then mark 25% of the way down the blade, halfway down the blade, and three quarters of the way down the blade. And you wanna make these marks on the outside edge because if you have to thin this down and your marks are in the middle, you're immediately gonna plane off your marks. Now. Next thing you can do is grab your dial caliper or you can improvise one with a combination square and you can measure the thickness at these different points and you can compare them to the paddle plan drawings and then if you need to, you can thin out your blade down the center on both sides evenly. Now, as you're doing this, make sure that you're checking because it's not necessarily a continuous swipe. You might have to do a little bit more in one area, a little bit less in another. So however you need to do it, you just wanna go ahead and thin this down to the dimensions that are shown in the plans. And then at that point, you're probably gonna have a little flat spot on either side. And then you can just grab your block plane and you can kind of blend that into the rest of the blade. So before we check the flex on the blade, there's one more bit of shaping that you might wanna do, and that is to carve this area around the root of the blade into a little bit more of a diamond or a dihedral shape. Now, as far as the water is concerned, this doesn't improve the performance of the paddle, but it does let us save a little bit more weight, and also it improves the feeling of the hand grip. So this seems like a good time to come back to this profile gauge that I showed you in the tool video. Now, keep in mind this step is optional, so if you don't have one of these, don't sweat it, but if you do, this can be really useful to make sure that you're not cutting away too much or too little material during the final shaping process. So how you're gonna use this is at any time during the final shaping process, you can come to one of the marked blade stations or anywhere else along the blade, and then the way that I like to do this is to put my fingers on the outside of these plastic fingers so they don't spread apart, and then gently push down over the shape of the blade. Next, you can set the lock so it doesn't move on you, and then you can either eyeball this shape and see how it compares to the shape that you're hoping to achieve, or you can trace this onto a piece of paper and compare the shapes to the shapes in our paddle plans. Now, if you're working from a set of our paddle plans, keep in mind, this isn't gonna be an exact match to your paddle because depending on the size of the paddle, your blade might be a little bit wider or a little bit narrower. So you're just looking for a shaping comparison, not necessarily an exact fit. So taking another quick look at the paddle plans, you're basically just looking to transition from an elliptical shape out by the tip of the blade slowly into a soft diamond shape down here by the root. Now, if you're working with a heavier, stiffer piece of wood like fir or spruce or yellow cedar, you can actually make this diamond shape by the root a little bit more acute here, and that's gonna save some additional weight. But if you're carving out of red cedar or northern white cedar or one of the soft pines, I probably wouldn't go much further than this. Now, you can actually carve all these sections into a much more extreme diamond shape if you want, and that will make your paddle even lighter. But just like I talked about in the shaping video, once you get any more diamond shape than this, you start to really change the performance of the paddle in ways that are not necessarily bad, but definitely different. So if you want a refresher on that, just go back and watch the blade shaping video. So just a quick demo here. I'm gonna start by just making some witness marks across the blade here so I can see what I'm doing while I'm cutting. I'm gonna come down halfway on the blade I'm gonna get my block plane and I'm gonna set it to about a medium cut. And then I'm just gonna start working this quadrant right here exactly like we did before when we were cutting the shoulders. So I'm gonna get rid of wood here and I'm gonna get rid of wood over here.
Make sure you watch your black line so you don't end up cutting any deeper. We're just looking to take a little bit extra off this quadrant. And then you're not gonna cut all the way up to the ridge either. We're not looking to create a perfect diamond shape here. We're just looking to hint at a diamond shape. And if you're doing this in a softer wood, you don't wanna go too far. So once I've got that material carved down here, I'm just gonna blend this back together really carefully. I don't wanna reduce the center height of the paddle, so I'm gonna back my plane off really far. And then I'm just gonna blend this in. And then looking at the whole blade, like I just said, we did all that work from the center of the blade up to the root. So if you notice, there's a little bit of a weird transition between this section and the rest of the blade. You can grab your block plane, set really fine, and you could just blend these together. So getting back to the flex, the exact amount is a little bit difficult to quantify because the amount that this flex is down with a certain amount of weight hanging off it would change depending on the size of the paddle and also the species of the wood. And so it's more important to look at how the blade is flexing rather than exactly how much it's flexing. So just for an example here, I'm gonna take a 10 pound weight and I'm gonna hang it off the end of this paddle and that's gonna cause this to sink down about one inch. Now, keeping in mind that this is just a demonstration, not necessarily how I normally do this, I want you to notice the curve of the layout line along the edge here. And what you wanna see is either a continuous curve all the way from the root of the blade to the tip, or even better, a little bit of a progressive curve that increases towards the end of the paddle. So as far as what I'm looking at right now, I'm pretty happy with this. It looks a little bit straight out here, so I'm probably gonna take about a 64th off either face of the paddle and then shape it again, and then that should be just about perfect. Now, there's always the chance that I might try to get scientific about this in the future and try to quantify this deflection for different sizes and different wood species. And so if I decide to do that, the way that you would do this test is you wanna clamp it down to a workbench that is very stiff and is not gonna flex, and you're gonna clamp the root down at the edge of the table, and you're gonna put four clamps along the blade just to make sure that you're completely isolating the flex here, and then I'm gonna hang exactly a 10 pound weight off this and measure the deflection. But for right now, just do this with common sense. Basically, when you've got this clamp down to your workbench, when you push down on this, it should feel springy, but not spongy. And then as far as how I actually normally sight the line on the edge, I find what's easiest is just to grab the paddle in my hands and push one end against the floor and push on it and then sight down the edge and just take a look at the curve. And then I can put it back on my workbench, modify it a little bit, measure it, and keep doing that until I'm perfectly happy with what I see. And then of course, you wanna make sure that whatever you're doing on one end, you duplicate perfectly on the other end.